Today on VRS TV Investigates, we bring more clarity to the question, do you really need heat and flow in your saltwater mixing bin? Hi, I'm Randy, the host for the YouTube series, BRS TV Investigates, where we take popular reefing theories and put them to the test. So far on these BRS TV Investigates salt mix experiments, we've discovered two things. One, it takes longer to fully mix salt water than what most reefers may have thought. And two, adding heat and flow to the mixing process seems to prevent a ton of crust in the storage bin, as well as help maintain parameters for alkalinity and calcium during storage. So for this week, we attempt to answer two things. First, after the salt water is fully mixed and homogenized, can you turn the flow and heat off and then store the salt water without causing precipitation or a change to alkalinity and calcium parameters? And secondly, is heating really required? Okay, you may be asking yourself how all of this salt water mixing and salt water storage testing affects you and your reef tank. Well, up until now, nearly all of the advice for how to mix and store salt water has been pretty anecdotal and all over the place, with conflicting recommendations to heat or not heat while mixing, mix until visibly clear, or mix multiple hours or days, use the salt water immediately after mixing, or that it can be stored for an extended period of time, and the list just goes on. With so much ambiguity surrounding a topic that affects pretty much every single tank out there, by the time we're done testing, we hope to be able to give a final answer to the question of how to properly mix salt water. And from the results we've seen so far, there seems to be a best practice approach to mixing and storing salt water becoming increasingly clear. So in order to clarify the differences between the results we've seen in the last two storage tests, where we saw changes to the alkalinity and calcium as well as precipitate buildup when the tanks were unheated and uncirculated, and basically the complete opposite without changes to alk and calcium or signs of precipitate when they were constantly heated and circulated, we plan to conduct two final tests to see if we can determine why we saw those differing results. To test whether continuous heat and circulation is required to maintain stable parameters and keep precipitate at bay, we'll literally pull the plug on the heated and circulated storage test, which have been mixing at 78 degrees for over two weeks, and let them sit for a couple of more weeks with no flow and heat while we monitor them for changes to alkalinity and calcium, as well as any potential precipitate to form. Alongside of that, in a second experiment, we will mix brand new salt water for a full 48 hours without heat to create a fully homogeneous solution, then pull the plug on the pumps and determine if adequate flow and intentionally longer mixing times are required to prevent obvious signs of precipitation and shifting parameters. All right, let's first find out what happened when we turned off the heaters and power heads after it had been mixing and heated for over two weeks with Tropic Marin Pro, Tropic Marin Classic, Red Sea Coral Pro, and Red Sea Salt in the blue bucket, Brightwell Neomarine, HW Reefer Salt, and the Instant Ocean Standard and Instant Ocean Reef Crystals. Looking at the calcium data across the board, where we're showing the last two weeks of the parameters when the heat and pumps were on, along with two weeks of data after the plugs were pulled, there's really no drastic change to any of the salts, including those elevated salts like the Red Sea Coral Pro. For changes to alkalinity across all eight salts, we see a very similar story where there was little to no change in parameters in the last two weeks of being heated and circulated, and following the power being off for the pumps and heaters, we continued to see very stable DKH levels. It's pretty plain to see that heating and circulating the salt water for a couple of weeks not only helped to create a fully homogeneous solution, but even after two weeks of storage with the pumps and heaters off, we continue to see solid stability in alkalinity and calcium levels. Looking at this data overall, I think almost all could infer that after the salt water is fully mixed or homogenized, it's less important to keep the heat and the flow turned on. To show a visual representation of what these tanks look like after multiple weeks of storage with heat and circulation, and then with both of those variables being removed, we added a couple of black and white poker chips to the bottom of each tank to help determine how much, if any, precipitate resulted. From what we can see throughout each of the salt mixes, there really is almost no measurable precipitate in any of them, and for the couple of mixes that show a very slight haze, I'd likely suspect that as being some sort of insoluble or organic material from the mining or evaporation process of the various materials that make up a complete salt mix. 
Moving on to our experiment of mixing the salts for a full 48 hours without heat before turning the pumps off and taking measurements, I have to say that after the pumps were off, I noticed right away a distinct amount of precipitate in a few of the tanks. The same precipitate wasn't present in the heated and circulated tanks, so let's see what the numbers have to say and take a look at the precipitate using the same black and white poker chips as a reference. Starting with the calcium levels for the unheated and uncirculated test, we don't see much of a drastic change in parameters from the 48 hour point to the one week mark, as a majority of the salt mixes remain within that plus or minus 10 to 15 parts per million margin of error for the hobby grade testing accuracy and testing procedure. After 48 hours of mixing and the pumps turned off, Tropic Marin Pro started with 425 parts per million and after one week was pretty much unchanged at 420. Tropic Marin Classic showed similar stability with a 410 start point after 48 hours and 400 after one week of storage. As for any visual precipitate or insoluble material, both of these salts showed little to no signs at the bottom of the mixing container, which can likely be attributed to how clear they can mix within a 24 hour period, as well as the pharma grade materials used to create that salt mix. Brightwell's Neomarine Calcium started at 425 parts per million after 48 hours of mixing, and after a week of storage ended at 400, which is slightly outside of the margin of error range, but still there really is almost no visual sign of precipitate in the tank, which may have something to do with it being one of the few salts that mixed clear under the 24 hour mark. HW Reefer Salt remained flat at 425 during the week of storage, however on this one we do see a noticeable haze of precipitate or insoluble material at the bottom, much like we did during the initial unheated and uncirculated test. The Red Sea Salt in the Blue Bucket and the Red Sea Coral Pro showed little change to calcium over a week of storage after each being mixed for 48 hours. However, visually, we can see a difference between a salt mix that has purposely elevated levels for alkalinity and calcium, where the blue bucket salt shows little to no signs of precipitate in the storage container, while directly after turning off the pumps, I did notice a distinct amount of precip at the bottom of the Coral Pro, which really starts to show the importance of following distinct mixing instructions given by the salt mix manufacturer for the best performance. In this case, Red Sea not only recognizes how elevated levels of alkalinity and calcium should behave in a salt mix, but they also provide reefers who use the salts with clearer guidance with detailed instructions on how to properly mix the salt to overcome things like precipitate when using them, as we can see probably was the case here when we didn't follow it directly. Moving on to the calcium levels for the Instant Ocean Standard, we see a start point of 420 parts per million and after a week it's at 400, which is just 5 parts per million outside of our error margin and not really much of a change. We do notice some insoluble material and precipitate in the tank, which was also one of the salts that didn't mix clear in our 24 hour mixing test. Lastly for calcium is the Instant Ocean Reef Crystals that showed similar results with a start point of 500 and an end point at 480, also with some measurable amount of precip in the bottom of the tank. Let's take a quick look at the alkalinity results for this experiment, where we see Tropic Marin Pro hold steady at 7.2 for both test points. Tropic Marin Classic showed a slight increase from 9 to 9.2 at 48 hours and one week respectively, which is under our 0.5 dKH margin of error. Brightwell Neomarine started at 7.9 and ended at 7.8, which is really no change at all. HW Reefer also shows nearly no change from 8.6 to 8.3 dKH during the test. For Red Sea Blue Bucket, we see a variance inside of our margin of error from 8.0 to 7.9 dKH. Red Sea Coral Pro shows a drop of almost a full dKH point from 10.2 to 9.3, which again is what most would expect in an elevated salt mix and is also similar results to what we saw in our first initial test of unheated and uncirculated storage. Instant Ocean standards alkalinity doesn't change much from 48 hours to one week, where it starts at 9.8 and ends at 10.0 dKH. And to wrap up this test with the reef crystals, we again really see no shift in parameters from 10.7 to 10.8 during the testing period. 
From the entire panel of results that we saw here today and to answer our first question of after the salt water is fully mixed, can you turn off the flow and heat and then store the water without causing precip or changes to parameters? I'm going to rate this one a 9 on the reef certainty scale and say with some level of confidence that after seeing today's results, it certainly seems like you don't need the heaters and circulation after the salt water has been fully homogenized to keep the precipitation out of the storage bin and still maintain consistent alkalinity and calcium and from the looks of it even on those elevated salts. For the second question, is heating really required? I'll give this one a 7 towards being a reef certainty because there are absolutely some salts that showed no change to parameters and no real precipitation when heated and circulated. However, with the heat removed from the equation, definitely showed some signs of measurable precipitate on the bottoms inside of the storage tank, even after being intentionally mixed for an extended period of time. Some salts like Tropic Marin Pro do have instructions that call for mixing salt in heated water. However, in our case, none of our experiments on that salt mix seem to actually require it. I'd also note that throughout these tests, we also learned that those salts where we saw little to no precipitation were some of the same salts that were able to mix up clear within our 24 hour time lapse experiment. In the end, how will today's results affect hobbyists in their tanks? For one, there's a lot to be said about properly following the manufacturer's instructions for mixing, specifically in the case of elevated salt mixes. And as a general statement, mixing for at least 48 hours with heat and flow will likely produce the best results. Along with that, there are choices out there that do mix clear in less time than others, with some in as little as an hour. So there is an option for those looking to have a fully homogenous salt mix ready to go in shorter amounts of time. However, personally for me, when it comes time to do a water change, I will simply start mixing my water the day prior and allow it more time to mix fully clear before using it or for that matter, just have a batch mixed and stored at all times without any concern to shifting parameters prior to using it. You know, it's pretty common for many of us to seek out the absolute best of the best to help our decisions on what we want to use for our saltwater aquariums, and salt is definitely one of them. However, in most cases, what's best is going to be pretty subjective to each individual. In Ryan's video about which salt mix is best, he doesn't actually appoint one salt above the rest, but instead helps to explain reasons why reefers choose one salt over another, which may help you pick one for your own tank. So click on that link to check it out. We'll see you next time on BRS TV Investigates.